Okay, welcome everyone. James Park from jamespopulov.com. And we've got up Mr. The legend that is Mr. Mac O'Grady. Um, very successful player back in the 70s and 80s. Um, uh, tried 17 times to get on tour. Um, finally got on tour, ended up winning twice on the PGA Tour. Um, but more importantly than that, he really is a, a, a kind of a, a model for what we call this modern golf swing, right? That, that Mike Bennett and Andy Plummer, the, the stack and tilt guys, they, they're big fans of Mac O'Grady. They, they, you know, they talk in, in their book of, of talking at length of the swing with, with Mac O'Grady. And of course, if you, if you've done any research on, um, the sort of things he was into back in the day, then, you know, he was a big student of the, the golfing machine book, um, by Homer Kelly. Um, and he thought there was a way of doing it, right? There's actually a way of moving our body, uh, swinging the club, and uh, and operating the whole movement in a in a machine-like fashion, right? And that's where that's where the stack and tilt book come from, um, and that's where a lot of these guys nowadays, uh, modern swingers, um, all kind of are getting the same sort of information from. So. So let's uh, let's take a look at what's going on. So draw the line here from his right leg. Okay. So first and foremost, you know, look how look how early he sets his wrists. Right. He's almost got 90 degrees, and his hands are only kind of waist height. All right. So lots of wrist hinge early. All right. And this is one of the big differences between. Old fashioned teaching, you know, modern swing teaching is, you know, it was all about, back in the day, it was all about, well, get wide and, and make sure you get this right elbow away from the side of your body where, you know, you can clearly see there, his right elbow is very close to his torso, alright? He understands the pressure points, right? One, two, three in your hands, four and five underneath your armpits against your torso. And then six and seven down here, your left foot against the ground, right foot against the ground. Right. So wrist hinge early, very important, right? And as he's hinging his wrist, right, he's trying to not only turn, but remember the turn is three dimensional. It's a turn, there's an extension involved, and there's also a tilting involved, right? Now what he's trying to do in his body, while he's moving his body in that way, all revolves on keeping his head nice and steady. Right? So it's very difficult to keep your head in the same place right? if you're only turning your body. You have to understand this tilting aspect and you have to understand the extending aspect. Right? So a good um, example would be someone like Steve Elkington, who again, back in, I think it was 2007, I want to say, 2008, something like that, started working with Mike, ben, Mike Bennett and Andy Plummer. Um, so, you know, obviously in, in the tournament, he's out there and he's got his, you know, maybe his manager and his caddy or, you know, something like that. And we draw a line there where his head is, you know, you can clearly see his practice swing. He's working on this drill of tilting to the side, right? His head's moving, right? He's not worried about his head. He's just working on that feeling of extending his body and tilting his body, right? During his backswing, right? That's what he's feeling, right? Now, obviously, you've got to feel that, but you've got to feel that whilst you're keeping your head in the same position. So, you know, if you put a little line where his left ear is, now he's feeling that in his swing, right? And he's keeping his head nice and steady. Right? So a good drill for you all to practice because most people, when, when they come to see me, you know, either they send me their swing online or you come to see me um, at Stonebridge um, out here in Dallas, you know, most people have a, have a little bit of head bob to the right. Okay, and this is this is a no-no. We don't want to move anything to the right, obviously. You know, in our body, 
Okay, obviously the club and our arms and our hands are moving to the right. But if you want to keep your head steady, right, you have to understand this idea of extending and tilting to the left on the backswing. All right. And if you do that, then we can keep our head in the same, in the, in the same position. Right. Anyway, back to Mac. So lots of wrist hinge early. Right. Nice, great position at the top of the swing there. And also you can see how if we put a little dot there where his right pocket is or his right thigh is, right, look how as he goes back, right, right leg straightened a little bit, left leg's bent, and because of that, right hip is higher than the left hip, right? Now, obviously he's not tilting to the left, right? But He's feeling that in his swing, right? Believe me. He's feeling that to keep his head in this little box, all right? He's feeling some extension this way and he's feeling a tilt this way. Very, very important that you understand that what we feel isn't always real. You can practice the elk drill where you move, where you move your head to the side, right? This way. But obviously in the golf swing, our head's got to stay nice and stable. Now, as he's moved back, his right leg and his right hip have actually increased this space here, right? That gap has got wider, right? It hasn't got shorter, so there's no lateral movement this way away from the target. It's all going this way, right? Now, here's his golden move, right? Here's his golden move from the top. Watch this sit. I mean, this is, this is, this really is in the world of kind of Hogan and Sneed, right? And you know, it's, it's a it's a sitting into the left foot, right? Really feeling as though underneath your left foot here, right? To start the swing down nice and we gather it from the top. There's no jerkiness. There's no kind of quickness from the top. It has to be gathered. Right, and we gather it in that first joint of our trigger finger in our right hand right here. Okay, you can really feel the pressure build up there. You need to sit into your left foot, really feeling the weight underneath the ball of your left foot, right? So, you know, there's, there's, there's lots of little analogies that you can use. You could use like a, you know, imagine you've got a Coke can underneath your left foot. And as you start down, you're trying to crush the coat can, right? Another one would be a tomato. Try and imagine you've got a tomato under your left foot and crush the tomato, right? And all of this is going to send your hips moving laterally and rotationally, okay? But there's no, there's never any yank down here, right? All this is nicely gathered. Pressure builds up in the trigger finger of the right foot, the, the, the right hand. Right, so it's a sit, and then as we come down, and this is where a lot of people go wrong as well. Once they get down to here, you know, I, I teach a lot of play, a lot of good players, especially when they come down to here, right? They kind of dump, start dumping the club. So look how much lag he's still got. Another point with lag, right? So there's his backswing. Right, let's say that's how much wrist hinge it gets, right? But watch how he's increased his lag coming down. I mean, his club now is this way. So he's actually increased his wrist hinge. Okay, as he sits underneath his left foot, increases his wrist hinge. And once he comes down to here, just allow the centrifugal force to release the club head, right? To all my American cousins, it's centrifugal force, not centrifugal, right? Correct, correct pronunciation is centrifugal, right? Now, what I promote from the top here as we're sitting into our left leg is that you start to feel like your left wrist is slightly bowing, all right? And that's conducive with getting the pressure in that trigger finger of your right hand as well, that first joint or that first pad of your trigger finger. Okay, now, as he comes down, he's not trying to release it. He's not trying to throw it with his right hand. What he's trying to do is just allow the centrifugal force, release the club head, gets to impact, his weight's forward, shaft's forward, hands are forward, 
Now watch what happens after impact. Right? We've always been taught, oh, you must release the club head, right? You have to release the club head. Club head has to rotate. So throw that right hand at it. Well, you can clearly see here, there's no throwing of the right hand, right? Look at the angle between his right arm and the shaft. Right, and this essentially is called the flying wedge drill, right? So if you draw a line from his right shoulder to the club head, and then, you know, a line down his right arm and down the shaft, you've got that kind of wedge sort of angle, right? Flying wedge drill. So my advice to all you guys who try and flick it, try and release your right hand, right? Well, this is one of the best in the, was one of the best in the business, right? Real kind of model to copy. There's no release there. Okay, there's no release there. Okay, with regards to his left hand and his left wrist, yes, it's cocked, it's lagged. We've built up the lag, we've loaded it. But as we come down and through impact, now his left wrist is uncocked. Okay, so cocked there, loaded it, lagged it, sat down into his left leg, look how much the left knee moves laterally as well as he sits into the left leg, and then his left wrist is uncocked, all right, so cocked and then uncocked with the left wrist, all right, but big, big difference between throwing your right hand at it, releasing it, and just understanding that centrifugal force is going to release the club head, you don't have to actually try and release the club head, all right? Most people who try and release the club head when they come down to here, instead of having this awesome position like Mac, right, your club shaft is down here already somewhere, all right? Which means the club head is gonna dump behind the ball, okay? You're gonna pull up with your body, you're probably gonna hit it thin, or you're just gonna hit the ground behind the ball and hit it fat. You can see as he comes down with lots of lag, it's the ball first, then the ground, Right, and look at the stress in the shaft as well. Lots of stress that way. Right. So great little example, right? No release. No release. And it's kind of like a it's kind of like a sit and a hold kind of swing, isn't it? To sit there, big sit into his left leg and hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Make sure we're uncocking the left wrist, right, and we're maintaining this bent right wrist. And then you can really kind of get the idea of this flying wedge drill. All right, guys. Um, any questions, please leave them below. Um, really, really good example of a, of a great, great model, uh, model golf swing. You know, very centered, um, really understands the kind of the, the dynamics needed in the golf swing and his hands, you know, how he produces this lag and this sit into his left leg. I mean, this is kind of, I mean, this is, this is world class. It really is very, very, very impressive golf swing and a model without question, a model sort of technique. All right, guys, any questions, please leave them below and I'll get to them when I can. Cheers.